In this problem, I'm told that I have a ladder. And when the ladder leans against the wall, it's a 25-foot ladder. Um, when it leans against the wall in this position, it reaches the wall 20 feet up. Um, then the ladder is shifted. And the ladder is shifted in a way so that this length here is twice as long as this length up here. Uh, so I'm going to label those two lengths. I'm going to label this as x. I'm going to label this as 2x, since that length is going to be twice as long. And what I'd like to find here is when I shift that ladder so that this ratio takes place, basically a 2 to 1 ratio, I want to find out how long this length along here has to be. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, actually uh, I was going to label this with another variable. I'm actually going to wait on that other variable for a second, although my long-term goal is going to be to find that length right there. Okay. One of the things that I notice when I first look at this problem is that I actually have two right triangles. And having two right triangles is going to be incredibly important. In particular, uh, sometimes you get a little bit caught up looking at the variables and you miss the forest for the trees. Notice that this is actually a right triangle here in which I have two out of three sides. Okay, that's a right triangle in which I have a side length of 25 and a side length of 20. You can go through the Pythagorean theorem and you can find this length here. And what that's going to allow me to do is to label that missing piece without using a second variable. I'd, I'd rather not use a y variable and have to write a system of equations, although you could do that in this problem as well. So here's the point. I could use the Pythagorean theorem here, uh, but I notice that these are divisible by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. This is a little 3, 4, 5 right triangle. It's a little 3, 4, 5 triangle that's been multiplied by, um, by 5. And so that means that that missing side is going to be 15. So I know that this entire side down here at the bottom is 15 units. I think it's feet in this problem in the original I'm working from. Uh, which means that I can represent this length using the whole length of 15 and the shorter length of 2x. That's just going to be 15 minus 2x. And this is very crucial because now you'll notice that I've labeled all of the segments that make up this first ladder. I want to try to do the same thing for the second ladder as well. And there's something very big that I've missed. Notice that the length of the ladder does not change when I do the ladder from this tilt to this tilt. It's still a 25-foot ladder. And so kind of the, the mystery unlabeled thing here is the fact that, that other length there is also 25. Okay, take a look at what I have now. The original triangle, I know all three lengths, and I have a representation for this length using my single variable. My second ladder now, I also have all parts labeled, and they involve variables. So I'm going to come over here and try to set up a, an equation and see what we can do here. Um, just looking at that taller triangle, I've got a length of 15 minus 2x across the bottom. Uh, the height is actually 20 plus x, and then the hypotenuse is going to be 25. And once again, as soon as I have all three sides of the right triangle labeled, I can fill that into the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so it's going to be the length squared, in this case that's 15 minus 2x quantity squared plus 20 plus x quantity squared is equal to 25 squared, which is 625. Now I have to be real careful here. Um, I've got double FOIL problems here. This is the quantity 15 minus 2x times the quantity 15 minus 2x. Uh, this is the quantity 20 plus x times the quantity 20 plus x. And so I have to very carefully FOIL these out. Uh, in this case, uh, it's going to be 225 minus 60x plus 4x squared. The second one is going to be plus 400 plus 40x plus x squared, and then the whole thing equals 625. Now, there's a lot of simplifying I can do. I have to be careful how I do this. A um, few like terms here. Let's see what I can combine. Uh, I've got a 225 and I've got a 400. Uh, by the way, notice that those add up to 625, and there's a 625 over here as well. So I can actually subtract 625 from this side and 625 from that side, and basically these are going to end up canceling out. Uh, I'll be left with a zero over on this side of the equation, and that's going to make things a little bit easier to work with. Now, follow up here. 
I've got a negative 60x and a positive 40x. That adds up to negative 20x. I have 5x squareds, and the whole equation equals 0. All right? Uh, this is a quadratic. Notice that I have a greatest common factor. I can divide 5x out of both sides of my equation, and that leaves me with negative 4x plus x is equal to 0. I'm sorry, um, x divided as negative 4 plus x equals 0. So either x is equal to 0, which doesn't really mean anything there, which just basically mean that I'm leaning it straight up against the wall. So the answer doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, meanwhile, x could be equal to 4 from the second part of the equation. Uh, so let's look at what happens. If x is equal to 4, uh, this like the 2x down here is equal to 8. 15 minus 8 should be 7 for this. Okay, and notice if x is equal to 4, 15 minus 8 is in fact 7. And 7 feet, I think, is the units from the um, original problem. That ends up being a 7 foot long distance, and I've found my missing length. So, again, I can't stress it enough. Get all three sides of your right triangle label, even if you have to use variables on multiple sides. And you should be able to substitute it into the Pythagorean theorem and come up with some kind of a solution. In this example, I have a right triangle that has two medians drawn. So going from the acute vertex down to the midpoint of this side, and a second one from this acute angle to the midpoint of this side. You can see I've got the two congruent segments marked. I have two medians that are intersecting each other, and I know the lengths of the medians. I know that one medium has a length of radical 73, the other one has a length of 2 radical 13, and that's enough information for me to be able to find the side lengths of this triangle, uh, which I could use if I needed to, to find the length of the hypotenuse of the big triangle. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, looking at this problem, it seems like there's a lot of unknown information. Uh, I don't know how wide the triangle is this way, I don't know how tall it is, not very much information. Um, I'm going to take a different direction than I've taken in a lot of the problems I've done that are, seem to be similar to this. And I'm going to use two variables. And the reason I'm going to use two variables here is if you notice when you look at this picture, I have two right triangles. I have a little right triangle. I have uh, another right triangle here. Actually, there's a third right triangle because the big triangle is a right triangle as well. So I could actually use as many as three variables and three equations here. I don't want to solve a three-variable system. I think I can work out this problem with two. So what I'm going to try to do here is label these two sides as x, these two sides as y, and my claim here is that I can do a double Pythagorean theorem, two Pythagorean theorem equations, write a system, and solve that system. Okay, so here's what I've got. I've got one right triangle. If you look at this uh, shorter one here, it's got a side length of 2y, it's got a side length of x, and the diagonal there is 2 radical 13. Uh, 2 radical 13, by the way, that would be radical 4 times radical 13. 4 times 13 is 52. I'm actually going to write that as radical 52 instead of radical 13, just because it'll make the simplification a bit easier later. Um, so according to the Pythagorean theorem, I get the first equation uh, that x squared plus it's 2y squared, that's going to be 4y squared, is equal to the square of radical 52, which is just equal to 52. Now I come back and I have a second right triangle. It's got a height of y, it's got a base of 2x, and it has a hypotenuse of radical 73. Same thing. Uh, this leg squared, which is going to be 4x squared, plus this leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, and I have something that looks like this. Now, this problem looks terrible at this point, but you're actually going to see this really isn't too bad. Um, I noticed if I had a negative 4 in front of the x squared here, that I could get these two equations to cancel out the x squared variable. So, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 4. That's going to be negative 4x squared minus 16y squared is equal to, and that's going to be negative 208. Okay, second equation here is 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 73. Uh, now when I add the two equations, a positive and a negative, cancel. Uh, here I end up with negative 15y squared is equal to, uh, and then negative 208 plus 73 is equal to negative 135, all right? I can divide 
both sides by negative 15. Uh, 135 divided by 15 is 9. I find out that y squared is equal to 9, which of course means that y is equal to 3. Now I have those lengths there. If I want to go back and find x, I can just substitute into any of the equations that I've already written. Uh, so for example, I know that x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 52. I know that y is 3. Okay, 3 squared is 9 times 4 is 36. So x squared plus 36 is equal to 52. I can subtract 36 from both sides. Uh, and I'm going to end up getting an answer of 16 equals x squared, meaning that x is going to have a length of 4. Okay, if I needed to find the other missing side, we've got a side length of 6 and 8. It's a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. And that longer hypotenuse would be 10. So kind of neat. If you do have two right triangles and you can't come up with a situation that we use only one variable, you might be able to try using two variables, two equations of two Pythagorean theorems, and works out pretty nicely.